worship and music. We are so grateful that you're tuning in. We're coming together on this Sunday, the month of November, the year 2022. Last month, there was a special focus and emphasis of uh, clergy, minister, pastor appreciation. And uh, even as we turn the calendars to this month, November, uh, it's a month that we celebrate Thanksgiving, but we're learning all the time to celebrate and to give thanks unto the Lord. It was also a special time in the life of this church, New Life Church of God, Palmetto, Louisiana, is our home base. And the last Sunday of this month, we'll celebrate 106 years of being called to serve God in his kingdom. So we begin this month talking about vision, uh, bringing the church's focus together. And so we join, we welcome you to join us as we worship the Lord this morning and ready ourselves for the word. You're welcome in the sanctuary. Worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as we 
welcome the Lord and as we extend uh, just a, a, a blessing unto you as you come. Uh, we, not, we may not know exactly what your week has held this past week. Uh, some of you may have had birthdays. Some of you may have had doctor's appointments. Some of you have maybe had critical decisions that you had to make. Maybe somebody going into this coming week, there's a critical decision that you need to be making. I pray that our time in worship, that you can be in tune in to the still voice of the Lord speaking unto you, giving you that guidance and that direction uh, as you look to him. Maybe there's a burden that you're having. Allow the Lord to take that burden. Allow your praise and worship to offer that burden unto the Lord and to trust him through it all, giving thanks and praise unto uh, the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the blessings of this day. Thank you, Lord God, for seeing us through this past week. And as we recognize who you are, we take away the option to praise you, the option to worship you. We are your children, O oh Lord. That's what we do. And your word lets us know that you inhabit the praises of your people. O oh Lord, come and inhabit the praises of us. Transform us. Give us, Lord God, a new perspective in life. Give us a fresh anointing, oh God, even as we worship you and adore you. Those hearts that still may be heavy this morning, oh God, lighten their loads as they roll their cares over to you, Lord God. I just say thank you, Lord God, for all that is said and done in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Our scripture reading this morning will be taken from Ephesians chapter 4. I uh, will invite you to stand with me for the reading of the word and even as we ready ourselves for our, uh, our song of the day this morning. As the Apostle Paul writes to the church uh, at Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 4 and uh, verses 1 through 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you have called, been, just, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Amen, amen, amen. If you remain standing as you're able for our, our song of the day, as we join together, glory, glory, hallelujah.
And we just pray and believe for a wonderful transformation. People are, are looking for answers to their work, to their lives. And I thank you that you are the answer, Jesus. And we pray for spiritual awakening, awakenings in a dark world, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're believing for community transformation. We're believing for the transformation of, of lives, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that we can believe you and to trust you, Lord God. And so we'll bless you forevermore, Lord God. We lift up every concern, every petition today in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, even as we have embarked upon the election season, oh Lord God, the divisions, Lord God, that election seasons continue to lift up, oh God. And we pray that you would be involved, Lord God. May those who seek positions of service of all recognize, Lord God, that all authority comes from you, Lord God. We just pray that there'll be an unveiling of hearts, oh God, an unveiling, Lord God, of who you are. God, we know that you are not a Democrat and you're not a Republican. Lord God, you are a God who stands alone all by yourself, oh God. And I thank you that we can join hands with you, Lord God. We are not a one-eyed ticket voter, Lord God. We are, are, are praying for all who serve, oh God. We're just believing, Lord God, that the body of Christ will arise, Lord God, and to, to be salt and to be light as never before, oh God. So we do pray for those areas and those persons who desire to serve, oh God. Be merciful unto them, Lord God. And as we pray always, just expose, just may your light shine upon them, and upon their hearts and upon their agendas. Lord God, our government needs you. It needs your help. It needs, Lord God, your might and your power. It needs the government to honor you, Lord God. And so we just pray, Lord God, that you would just shine light upon this season that we go to the ballot on Tuesday, Lord God. And uh, we're just going to trust you as we are on assignment as a people of God to represent you, to be followers of Jesus Christ in a world that's looking for answers. Hear our prayer today as you are welcomed in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say amen. amen. Again, we extend the warmest of welcomes to you, those of you who are gathered in the sanctuary, those who are joining us <clears throat> online. We pray <clears throat> that you can sense and to know the presence of the Lord that is with you and to know that He, His love is desiring to embrace you as you move through the day, as you move through the coming week. We don't know exactly what this week holds, but we're so grateful that we have the opportunity for God to hold us to lead and to guide us. So be encouraged, be excited about what God is up to in, uh, in your lives. As we ready ourselves for our message of today, it's entitled Vision. And uh, again, we're coming out of the month of October where there was clergy appreciation as we uh, had appreciation for our ministers and uh, just to recognize that. And so as we turn the corner to that and look to what God has in store for November, uh, just ask for our Samanic hymn, this Sister Sue would lead us uh, in uh, that uh, 
that song that uh, uh, through it all that I, I can feel like going on. I, I know that I can make it. I know that I can press my way through. And so uh, as we are encouraged, uh, even through that, we're going to have our somatic healing at this time.
September and looking forward to what uh, as October has nationally been declared as National Clergy Appreciation Month and his, his observation was that um, pastors are uh, in, in are three things are shared with pastors either pastors are tolerated they're appreciated or they're celebrated and uh, to kind of feel uh, the spectrum of where individuals are. Certain pastors are just tolerated. You know, we, we go ahead and preach, but you know that's about it. We we just tolerate you being here. You're here because there's nobody else we can get. Pastors 
can be tolerated, and then pastors can be appreciated. Uh, you know, their presentations and the like that uh, being known, but then pastors are celebrated. And his observation in knowing me, he said, Pastor Dale, your church celebrates you. And so I told him I appreciate that. Uh, and I pray that one day you can get to a, a time when you are celebrating. He felt that he was just uh, appreciated. Uh, so again, we uh, uh, honor uh, the church and uh, what you do and, and uh, as you continue to uh, show your love again to an imperfect individual, to an individual that's still on journey, uh, still uh, working the way through trials, still uh, lifting up the name of Jesus Christ and uh, uh, just uh, attempting to model some things before uh, the body of Christ. And uh, those of you who have served, I know that uh, brother and sister, brother Gerald is not here today, uh, but as he fulfilled the pulpit and uh, uh, even Sister Bianca, as she uh, shared on a, a Sunday and uh, was just so appreciative of um, all that could be shared, the testimony of uh, Chris uh, Kane uh, on uh, the fourth Sunday, and then last Sunday, uh, Reverend Dave Tanner shared, but uh, Dave is under the weather today, so uh, let's lift him up in prayer uh, as you go through the day and into the week. Uh, he is dealing with a stomach virus, and we know that um, I was just just happened to observe a little bit of the sports channels yesterday, just a little, okay, just a lot of that, but saw one football team in Texas that, I don't know, they had maybe a dozen players that were out with the flu, uh, and kind of decimated their, uh, their lineup, uh, and so uh, we have been blessed so far in this area. I know that in the southern, along the coast, there have been some parishes, some schools that have been closed because of the flu. Uh, but uh, again, we just want to give gratitude to God and to, again, I'm telling you this, the mask wearing, it, it, it kind of pays off now from the spreading of certain things and what have you. I know one thing that I've learned that a mask helps me with my own allergies. I wake up in the morning sneezing, oh, I go and put my mask on. <laughs> And it's saving me money because I don't have to buy any more Claritin. Oh, <laughs> and that mask on, it just goes away. I'm riding in my car sometimes, the mask on. No people, what are you doing with the mask on? You're in the car by yourself. That's all right, I'm dealing with allergies. <laughs> and that mask is a miracle worker. Oh, yeah. All right, giving thanks unto the Lord. Philippians chapter 1, as we kind of transition our focus uh, from October into uh, November, verses 9 and 10, what I want to share with you as our message is, the title of our message is simply Vision. Philippians 1 verse 9, and this is my prayer, the Apostle Paul writes to the church at Philippi, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of our God. Just had to put that little tag into uh, the reading of the scripture. As we continue to flow and turn towards uh, the celebrations in the month of, uh, of November. And as, as followers of Jesus Christ, uh, it's so wonderful that we can live a life of celebration. You know, the world system thinks that they have us beat or they can show us how to celebrate, uh, whether it's through Creoles or celebrating Cracklins or whatever uh, the, the event, the cause of the celebration may be. Uh, but we will not be left behind in causes to celebrate. And so even as we celebrate Thanksgiving, known as a month of November is known as a month of Thanksgiving, that the fourth Sunday of the month in this nation is designated as uh, Thanksgiving Day. Uh, but even in the life and the times of this church, we've honored um, the clergy that serve among us, ministers that serve among us. And now this church is embarking upon um, celebrating, remembering uh, that the call that God has on this local fellowship is turning 106 years old. So later on, the last Sunday of this month, we will acknowledge uh, the life and the times of this church. And we constantly ask ourselves the question, does God still want us to be a church in 2022? Does God still have a mission for us? Does God, does God still have a task for us? 
And so we want to challenge each other as we uh, move through this particular month. And so I recognize that one of my callings is to get us to see, to imagine, to picture what our life in Christ can be. That's one of our calls. That's what I want to mess with you on continually, getting you to imagine, getting you to picture what your life in Christ can possibly be. We know what our life in selfishness is. We know what our life in rebellion is. But I want to help us to, to paint that picture of what our lives can look like as we live in Christ. The word of God and the inspiration of God can elevate our view so that we can understand a little bit more what it is that we can become, what our lives can look like in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we write a life in Christ Jesus out of the picture because we think our past has disqualified us. Our past is what we have to hold on to. But the Apostle Paul says, behold, all things have become new. And so I want to constantly challenge you. If you feel that you are unworthy of a life in Christ, I want you to be mistaken and begin to imagine what God has in store for you. God can elevate your view. But we have to take our eyes off of the the world's pattern of living, because sometimes we feel this is the only way that we can live. You know, if somebody disrespects me, I'm going to disrespect them back. Somebody talks about my mama, I'm going to talk about their mama and their grandmama. You know, the world's uh, system, the world's modeling of some things uh, becomes so foreign. And I, I challenge us to take our eyes off of the world system. We know what it produces, and sometimes we think, well, we have to survive. I want you to know that Scripture never talks about followers of Jesus Christ surviving, but he talks about them thriving. He talks about them living in the abundance of life. That's not survival. And so I want to challenge those of you who are even viewing me today. If you think that you got to carry yourselves in that hard way so that you can survive, it's a world, it's a rough world out there. Listen, I, I celebrate and understand and appreciate even as parents are parenting and trying to provide coverings. But I want parents never to forget that there have been angels that can be discharged to watch over your children, watch over your grandchildren, to protect them, to undergird them, to block any dangers from happening in their lives. So get that view and never forget that our lives can be covered covered in the blood of Jesus Christ and to know that there are angels who can be encamped around about us. And so we just don't have to go through the motions of a Christian life thinking that, well, I'm going to just try my best. But we can understand that there are so many resources, heavenly resources that are available unto us. And so, yes, don't be mistaken. Life is hard. Never said that life was not hard. Life is hard. We recognize that. But know that it takes a made-up mind to be that follower of Jesus Christ that seeks to grow, that seeks to find purpose and meaning in life. And in following Jesus Christ, there's an, an opening of our eyes where we're able to see as never before. So even as we journey through the month of November, celebrating our life as a fellowship, celebrating that there is opportunities for our eyes spiritually to be open and to be enlightened in regards to that. Sometimes when our eyes are closed, all we can see is negative, negative. All we can see is the bad, the bad, the bad. And, and, and some, of, some of that is that, that sometimes you are gifted with that discernment. You're gifted with that ability to kind of see through them, some things. But understand that God does not give you discernment in order for you to run your mouth about how bad things are, but even more so to intercede. Ah, to fight the fight spiritually as you observe and see some things that are not going correctly. There is a, a calling that God has you to engage in in your life. And so as you're able to see that, as you're able to acknowledge all of that, oh, 
that's a blessing that this, this Christian life gives unto us. Before we knew Jesus Christ, we were blinded. We were blinded. We couldn't see life in the perspective that God wanted us to. All we could see is what we knew to see and what we knew to do. And all we could see was those around us. Well, so-and-so is making it. Let me live like that. They hadn't got caught. Let me live like that. Before we knew Christ, we were blinded to our perspective. All we knew is what we wanted to know. All we wanted to see is what we wanted to see. And we were literally groping in darkness, in spiritual darkness. And so when we are in Christ, our vision changes. We, when we are in Christ and part of a fellowship of followers of Jesus Christ, what comes along with that is the opportunities to see light in a clearer vein. And so we understand that we must become uncomfortable with all that we were comfortable with before. In our life before we knew Christ, we must now become uncomfortable with all of those ungodly ways, with all of those results of what uh, the, the flesh produced in our lives. And so we had to come to that understanding. And so with vision, we're able to see the bigger picture. With vision, that's why we can proclaim hope for our lives. We can pro proclaim that all is not lost as we're facing challenging times and challenging moments in our lives. We can still proclaim hope for our families, hope for our communities, hope for our neighborhoods. I'm telling you, if all you can do is desire to proclaim hope, and you don't see it in the word of God, and you're not spending time in God, you, you're not going to see hope because all you're caught up on is what's yeah. the mess that's going on around you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's no, there's no hope. There's no hope. Nobody is loving the Lord. Nobody is serving the Lord. You have your eyes on people, but when you can live your eyes with the word of God's focus yeah. and perspective, you're able to see hope because you're able to see hurts that's going on in lives. You're able to see the woundedness that has caused certain behaviors and certain lifestyles that have arisen. But with that vision, we're able to see a little bit more and we can understand that we can have vision to see hope. And so you and I, we both came out of a lifestyle where we allowed the enemy to steal, to kill, to destroy. You know, that's the lifestyle we all came out of. We allowed the enemy to do that to our lives, to steal, kill, to destroy educational opportunities that we may have had, to steal, kill, and to destroy uh, the loving, nurturing, raising of our children that we missed out on, allow the enemy to steal our health, to steal our esteem, to steal our future. But now, we're living in a fellowship that allows us to discover the abundant life that the Lord Jesus Christ has made available unto us. And so this vision comes with the word of God, as I have shared, that you're able to see the world in a different vein when you can see the world having reflected on the word of God, having allowed the word of God to shape you and to give you that world of vision, how you view the world, how you understand the world, that vision that comes with the word of God. That's how we can know how we are positioned to be the head and not the tail, to be at the top and never at the bottom, to know that the Lord can deliver us from the most difficult of our days. Amen. And so the word of the Lord gives us this vision, being caught up in a fellowship of believers that want to be challenged to see God at work when it seems that God is not working anywhere, but when we can see his hand of grace that has protected us, the hand of grace that have knitted some things together in lives and in circumstances and situations and even in institutions, to God be the glory. He is still at work. And so the word of God is giving this ministry a vision, even in the midst of hopelessness that we live in, lives that are lived without restraint, lives that are lived carelessly. 
We're able to see some things differently, being caught up in the vision, in the midst of hopelessness and despair, in the midst of generational curses. We can still see hope. Friends, never lose the ability to see hope in the midst of a hopeless situation. Yes, it may be dark. Yes, it may look dark. Yes, it may seem that there is no way possible, but God is still God, and he's able to do more than we can think or even to ask. That's our God. Focus in on God, church. Get your minds on God, church. God is speaking. Let the church say amen. amen. Get your minds on God, indeed. And so we see even this being a place where people can find forgiveness and guidance and encouragement and hope for their lives. My prayer is that as you would leave here, you would look forward to this week with hope, with expectation and anticipation that I know God has my week at hand. I know that he will lead and guide me and protect me. And I can be excited about what God is doing. You can leave this place and say, I feel like going Lord. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to surrender because I know the ancient of days, he has me. He has me. So therefore, as we gather in a place like this, we won't see perfection. Don't even fool yourself. We're all in process. We're all in process of learning to live by the Spirit of God so that we can produce the fruit of of the spirit in days like this. And so therefore, we'll point to a better way to live and our light is to shine for one another. Beloved, let your light shine for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Let your light shine. Stop being so hard and so mean. Let your light shine. Stop being so judgmental. Let your light shine for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Let your light shine for one another. We want to live our lives so that others can see what righteousness looks like. We want to live our lives in that vein. Oh, glory to God. I've been told how a simple thing like smiling can make somebody's day. Simple thing as far as like reaching out to someone and nodding their heads or giving them the A-OK -okay sign. Something like that can make a difference in lives when we can show love to those that don't deserve love. When we can show patience with someone who has just gotten on our last nerves. See, it's no longer about us. It's about reaching others. Others. Reaching others. The world system is not built like that. It's built about, it's all about me. But as followers of Jesus Christ, as being a part of a fellowship of believers, it becomes more about what can I do to reach others. It's not about, okay, they stepped on my foot, they hurt my feelings. But to see even larger than that, that's a soul that needs the Lord Jesus Christ. They're hurting. They're angry. They're confused. They need hope. They need to see righteousness. They need to see Jesus. So how can we be Jesus to the world around us? That's so undeserving to see Jesus. So if we were undeserving to see Jesus, but yet we were able to see Jesus, we live that life of love. That pure, undefiled is not about me. It's not about what I want, not about what I desire. But it's about reaching out to those that are lost. So if I have to be patient, I'll be patient. If I have to show myself faithful when no one else is faithful, I'll show myself to be faithful because someone else is watching. So the Apostles' Prayer that our love may abound in the depth of insight and knowledge. So verse 10, so that we may be able to discern what is best. That whole discernment, seeing a bigger picture, that whole vision, people, a picture there, that vision, so we'll be able to discern in your goings and in your comings, you're able to discern what's going on around you, what you are dealing with, what your peers are dealing with, what your co-workers are dealing with, that discernment. So God 
God help me and show me with this discernment how I need to carry myself in the world that I'm living in, in the uh, situations and circumstances that I find myself in. Be able to discern what is best so that we may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Discernment for what is best. The vision to find out not just what's good enough, but what's best for this day. What's best for this interaction? What's best for this day of work? What's best for this day with my family? Give me discernment. Give me that vision that I can know that I have a decision between truth and error. And we all know what error looks like because we've made a whole lot of errors. But to have the discernment and the vision that we can live this day in truth. There are many people that are justifying things in their lives. Again, saying, don't judge me because God knows my heart. The scripture that we constantly remind ourselves of in Jeremiah 17 and 9, when, when the word says that, that the heart is deceitful above all other things. And so therefore, when God knows our heart, God knows how deceitful our heart is because it's all about us and it's all about me building whatever reputation and whatever type of glow that I want to give unto the world that's around me. And so rather than trying to justify stuff in our lives, let's just focus on drawing closer to God rather than justifying some things. And I know of the insecurities that we have in our lives. I know of uh, the trouble that we have and sometimes with the esteem that we may have in our lives. But when you give your life to Jesus Christ, there is an abundance that comes with it. Even with our esteem, even with our value and our own self-worth, when we can capture and to grab a hold of all that heaven has in store for us every day. And so when we focus in on growing closer to the Lord, when we focus in on understanding more and more of what he has in store for us, what he has available unto us, we don't have to spend time justifying ourselves. Hey, we can repent. I was wrong. I repent. Uh, I'm going to move forward with this. And uh, rather than trying to justify my wrong and justifying my ways, I want to draw closer to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Grant me vision can be the prayer. We always are encouraging one another. Lord, show me me, that I can see me, my ways, what I need to detach myself from, that I've always had, and this has been me, and how I've responded, and how my personality has dealt with stuff. And to know that all things have become new, and to explore, explore all that God has in store for us, even as a church fellowship, to explore all that God has in store for us. God, I want all that you have in store for me. And so we can recognize that we want to draw closer to God, to live a life with his vision, <clears throat> to help us to give ourselves unto him and to acknowledge him <clears throat> in everything that we do and in all of our ways. And we can find out something wonderful in our lives. And so I want to pray with you today, even with the vision as we move through the month of November, the vision that we can have to, 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 to see what is it that you have for me, God. There's much, much more that God has in store for you to elevate what God is desiring of us. There's more that God has in store for even us as a congregation, as a fellowship of believers, as those of you who are joining us online that are a part of this fellowship, that we can see the vision, transforming lives, transformation of communities, neighborhoods, transformation of acceptable behavioral patterns. We've always done it that way, always lived our lives that way. But the culture can be changed and can be transformed in a mighty way. It only comes as we desire it. It only comes as we surrender and to let go. If nothing else has got to show, show you some things. Show you me. And why is it that we hold on to those certain areas in our lives 
that never seemingly can let go. Let's lose ourselves in Christ Jesus. Lose ourselves as we walk closer and closer unto him. Let's pray together. And even as we pray where you are, open your heart to the Lord. What's your desire of the Lord? The Holy Spirit has been speaking. You take what the Holy Spirit is saying and internalize that and use that prayer for this moment in your life. God has much more in store for all of us. Amen. You can live your life and you go through a day and say, God, you bless me. Yes. How great you are. Yes. How awesome you are, God. That even in spite of ourselves, you've given me hope and you open opportunities and doors. And I just want to slow down and to say thank you, Lord. So undeserving of this, God. But your grace. Your willingness to be involved in my life. Surrender it all unto him. Give it all unto him. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we can just yield ourselves unto you today. Thank you for this great love that you've made available unto us. And you want this love to abound more and more through the vision that you've given unto us, Lord God. It's not about a one person thing. It's not even about a one church thing, oh God. But you've given us vision for a greater day, for a greater today, and even a greater tomorrow, oh God. And so we want to clear the runway from whatever is blocking us from able to see how much more that you have in store for us, oh God. Hear the prayer of those who are opening their hearts up to you today, Lord God in this sanctuary, in their homes today, oh God. Hear our prayer. Grant us a greater vision, a greater insight, oh God, as our love abounds more and more, oh God. Help us to live a life in discernment. We spend time with you in the mornings, Lord God, not just to check off a to-do list, but we need the morning power to give us discernment throughout our day. Every day is different. Every interaction with individuals is different. And so, Father, give us that insight, that discernment, that vision, Lord God, that we can know what is best and what is pure, Lord God, what is blameless in how we live, oh God. Holy Spirit, we need you to build us up because in the natural realm to live a life following Jesus Christ, will destroy this flesh, will crush our spirits. But I thank you that the greater one lives in us and greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. And so, oh Lord, rise up within us. Be greater within us, oh God. Build us up and strengthen us, Lord God, that we can live this life, that we can get this discernment, oh God. Spend time in intercession, Lord God, in spiritual battle. Thank you for the spiritual battles that you have given unto us. May we, learn, may we learn and know how to engage in it. So, Father, as we close this prayer, as we pronounce the great amen upon our time together today, be glorified, be strengthened as commitments are being made and renewed, Lord God, as the invitations for your Holy Spirit to come into abounded lives are giving, as there are the decisions to release some things in their lives and to latch hold of you and depend upon you for our esteem and our value in life and value in this world. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. Let's celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ today. The vision that he's given to us as a church to see the transforming power of the blood of Jesus Christ. The vision that he gives unto, to your life. Your life as an individual. Your life as a family. Uh, may the Lord bless you and strengthen you as you continue to latch on and to hold on to who God is. And what he's doing. Amen. 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 It's been so good to have each and every one of you to join us today. And those of you who have joined us online, we give you thanks and praise uh, even for the blessings of that. just want to give, um, maybe if you will, a, 
official introduction. I told him I would do that in, uh, to the church, but you would notice the last several Sundays we've had uh, a new family to be with us, the Prajor's family, indeed, and so I want to just ask Quentin if he would stand and Dion, his wife, and De Quentin uh, to stand the Prajons here. And for us to just extend the welcome, the share the confession of faith. And uh, Dion, she came to my office the other day. Look, we want to, how come we can't do a Christmas play? <laughs> Look, she, and we appreciate that so much. And De Quentin is one of our Project Hope students. And uh, just celebrate them and uh, just welcome them into our fellowship. Uh, as they are on Roma Road. Anybody know where Roma Road is? Okay, amen. We welcome you. God bless you. So good to have you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's cover them in our prayers and our support and uh, undergird them also. So good to have Patrick Stewart. I don't want to call you out today, but so glad that you're able to be here uh, and to make your way. And you're welcome anytime uh, our doors are open. And may the Lord bless you. May you be strengthened and feel that you can go into. Uh, live this week in victory with God's Thanks. help. God Thanks. bless you. Good to have you, Patrick. Amen. So we extend a welcome to everybody else. Anybody else brought a guest with you? Uh, amen. So just good to have everybody with you today. As, yes, sir. How come we can't have a Christmas play? Huh? Look, that's already in the works. They've been All talking. right. Uh, they've been talking. Uh, this is a this is a a, um, a drama um, support system right here, right there. When you look at <laughs> Uh, he put Jesus and the blood on the cross. So, uh, <laughs> amen, amen. So I think that's going to, to, to go forward with that conversation with that. So thank you for being a part of the fellowship. Uh, again, it's been a decision to make. And so we support one another. We grow up to one another. We uh, even support through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And we just say thank you for your continued support. Those of you who give today, again, our receptacle, our offering receptacle is found in the back as you would give. We pray for an abundance of uh, resources to come your way. We know that we're transitioning to the holiday season, a lot of things that you want to do for holiday expenses that are there. Uh, may you see that good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, coming back unto you. As we give, we learn uh, that, uh, that God blesses us in awesome ways. Uh, I just, I just, I don't even have the courage to tell you how much God has blessed me. Uh, and uh, uh, just trust me, the word of God is true. It's true, it's true, it's true. Brother Burns used to sing that song, it is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Truly wonderful. We believe Amen. that and we live that indeed. All right, we're going to ready ourselves for our benediction for us to really go and be the church. This has all been uh, just uh, the, the preliminaries, if you will, to go and to be the church as our calling from this place. We know that election day is on Tuesday. Uh, I think that I'm going to go ahead and uh, just let the schools know that they can go ahead and then close schools on Tuesday. That's okay if I make that call, Jerome. I'll make that call. Okay, we'll, we'll make that call. If we see it can line up that uh, there'll be no school on Tuesday uh, for Election Day. But if you have not early voted, we encourage all of you to go and to cast your vote. We know here locally it's the, the big piece, I guess, is the renewal of the district road and drainage commission tax or whatever we know the service that they have been um, to us in various capacities and uh, we want to show our support uh, unto them um, there are various um, I probably need some help I probably will get into trouble right here um, yeah propositions and the one I'm thinking of is about the language of slavery in the state constitution we've been asked to vote against that change because it's been poorly worded. So it looks like a good thing to take away certain language, uh, slavery language still existed in the United States, I mean in Louisiana's constitution. Um, they want to take that out, but they have confessed it's not the best uh, way to do that. Uh, so they're asking that to vote against that proposition. You know the proposition we can kind of highlight are, are those areas that we kind of uh, look forward to uh, with that. So again, uh, we're, we're grateful. We're going to be good citizens, not just of heaven, but good citizens here in, uh, in the earth. 
Wednesday night, we go back, we do our, our regularly, Zoom, regularly scheduled Zoom call. We continue with that. This coming Friday is Veterans Day. Do we have any veterans in the house today? If you would stand, uh, veterans. Okay. We do have a couple of tickets available. Uh, you can be seated. Um, uh, Sister uh, Pat Mason Guillory, uh, the Memorial, the Veterans Memorial Annual Veterans Day Luncheon is this coming Friday uh, during the noon hour. The church, we do have, still have a couple of tickets that are available. So if any one of our vet veterans are available for lunch on Friday the 11th, uh, let me know and we can uh, make sure that you can be seated uh, in that time. Uh, and uh, any veteran can come, I guess, the veterans is no cost for the church. We do have some tickets as we are a sponsor of uh, those efforts uh, by Pat Mason Guillory. Again, trying to build a welcoming center at the Veterans Memorial, Highway 182 south of Opelousas. And uh, so, again, want to be supportive of that particular ministry, that particular outreach. Okay? All right, Lord willing. All right, so let's prepare ourselves for a great week. We can see it. We can envision it. Uh, and so we put restraints on our lives because we can see that. If you want more restraints, go back and to watch our series that we've just concluded uh, in our midweek time, our Zoom session, Building the Character of Christ. Restraints help us to stay focused in our lives. Let's be focused for this coming week. Enjoy a great afternoon, and uh, we're going to live in 80-degree weather until God says differently, huh? Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to ready ourselves for our benediction, and then we're going to be in hands of our ushers. May you have just a great week, an awesome week. I believe uh, something good is going to happen your way as you welcome Jesus of Nazareth coming your way. Let's pray a prayer of blessing and benediction. Father, we thank you for our time and coming together today. We celebrate you and we celebrate the great love that you have shown unto us. We have this vision that keeps us focused and allows various restraints to go in our lives that we can live faithful. Bless, Lord God, those under the sound of my voice. Keep them safe this week. Thank you for something good happening in their lives. Thank you for those that are viewing online. I pray blessings upon their homes, upon their families, upon their lifestyles, oh God. For those that are not able to make it today, watch over them. May they still live to give you glory. Until we gather again, may you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.